Hi, my name is Jamie Tomey, and I am pleased to welcome you to the Evanston Bound Corin Tour series, brought to you by Artist Book House. Each week, we get to talk to some amazing book artists and writers, letterpress printers, and paper makers. It's such a good time. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's Artists Bookhouse Corin Tour. My name is Jamie Tomey, and I'm so excited to have you all here today. And I'm really excited to introduce Beth Adler. Uh, Beth is a designer, a printmaker, and book artist. And today we're going to be talking about her work that she has worked on during the last six months during this time, this weird pandemic time. So she began with a piecing together a quarantine, quarantine journal. Uh, I apologize. I keep saying quarantor. Even when I say quarantine, I say quarantor because I'm so used to saying that. So she pieced together a quarantor, quarantine journal, uh, which she made at her dining room table. And then the COVID diary is a 12 foot accordion book. This is the, what we're really going to focus on today of collages done once she returned to her studio. And then there's a series that I just love, the COVID House Crow monoprints that are actually quite big. Um, and then, oh, is it co maybe COVID Houses is big? We'll talk about all of that, of that. Beth has been using this distressing time to explore the pain, anxiety, and concern we are all experiencing. So she's going to walk us through some of those projects. And um, Beth, I know that you know, um, First of all, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited Thanks. to have you here. You are just a few blocks north of me on Florence Avenue right now in your studio space. So mm -hmm. everyone else is coming in from all over the United States, all over the world. We're so excited to have everybody join us here in Evanston for our quarantine tour. Um, we usually start with the question, how did you come to the book arts? So would you like to sort of talk us through how you came to be a book artist? Sure. Well, I feel like, um, you know, I'm a graphic designer and I've had a, a, you know, pretty long career as a graphic designer and the company, I, I had my own graphic design company and we did posters and logos and marketing materials, but we also did a lot of books. And so I have quite a bit of experience designing um, traditional books. Uh, mm -hmm. My company specialized particularly in educational books, textbooks, kids books, different kinds of learning materials. I did a few coffee table books, but um, books were really my thing. And I've always loved books. I read a lot. My husband's a writer. Um, even the house we live in is called the book house. It was, uh, <laughs> it was built in, um, 1895, I believe, by a family called the Books, and it oh, is the Evanston Historic Registry as the Book House. So I feel like I was imprinted <laughs> with this. And no, then, no pun intended with imprint. Yeah, no yeah. pun intended. <laughs> I love that. With the book is in your veins. It is in your your DNA. Um, so can you sort of? Um, I know you're going to talk about this during your slideshow, but can you kind of talk us through how your response to COVID sort of started and why you felt like it was important to kind of mark this time? Well, the first project that we're going to see, my quarantine journal, was really just I guess in some ways it was art therapy. You know, it was just a way to focus my attention um, on, you know, just spitting out my feelings and using what I had at my fingertips, which was like a glue stick, some gel <laughs> pens, and a bunch of magazines. And, yeah, because um, you weren't at your studio, you no, were at home. I was at home. And so I actually had this journal that I had started, which was supposed to be like a garden journal, where I had taken pages out of a um, 
out of an old garden journal and I was adding to them. And then when this happened, I just was like, okay, this is no longer a garden journal. You will see some of the garden journal through the pages, but it really became a place for me to just stay grounded and, and get through this time and put my fears. It's a lot about fears. I mean, these were, this was begun in the very early days, you know, when I, I was afraid to leave the house. And yeah. um, so that's, I, I don't know that I was thinking, you know, this is an important thing to have a record of at that point. Right. I think at that point, I was just thinking, I hope I don't die, you know? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. You were, you were just kind of working through working doing yeah. doing what you do and that just happened to be what your what was on your mind and in your art right yeah and i wish i could say i'm an optimist but i'm not you know <laughs> I, I i tend to wallow in whatever i'm in and it can be a really happy thing or it can be a really scary thing yeah. and so um i explored that nice so let's go ahead and have you screen share and then I'm going to spotlight your video so that your face is off to the side on your screen share. And then we can go through your slideshow. If Great. you're ready. Yep. Um, all right. And also I mentioned this before people came on. Uh, I love that you're sitting in your studio space right now. It's just such a great thing to have all of that stuff behind you. I'm so curious about that your studio and I've been there multiple times of course but I just I just wanted to mention that to those those people who are not Evanston based um sorry okay. I have a little there I, I there we go okay. PowerPoint jumps around quite a bit so I'm going to yeah. do my best to kind of keep things straight so um okay so I, right now I just want to interrupt you because right now all we see is your is your shirt there we go <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I have a bigger screen and that's why you see me looking not right at the camera. So yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. Through. Okay. Um, art and books during the pandemic. And it's not a clever title, but it's all I could think of. And it's really about my output from March until really last week. Yeah. And um, it began as I began to talk with this quarantine journal. And I kind of see this in phases. And the first phase was stay home. You know, yeah. we had our groceries delivered to our doorstep and um, really tried to be as contained and quarantined as possible. And that really meant staying home, not even really going to my studio and working with the materials at hand. And so um, there's lots of layers. I, when I um, make books, I do make some simple books with an elastic binding where I just sort of put in sheaths of paper scraps and then I can work into them. So I can show you a little bit more when we look at the actual book. But this yeah. gives you a sense of some of the things I was thinking about, you know, and I really was thinking about life and death. I was also thinking a lot about nature because, you know, COVID is about nature. And I did feel like it was kind of nature saying, wait a minute. And, um, you know, it, it sort of put everything on pause. But yeah. you know, there were still bugs. We still had to get food. That was a big thing. I thought, okay, we got to figure out how to get food. And, um, you know, it was a concern. You had to figure out, could we go to the grocery store? Who was delivering? How does Instacart work? All those right, things. Right, right. The new way of grocery shopping. The new way. And then, um, you know, the thing that it was just getting larger, you know, that it, it seemed like it was going to go away in a couple of weeks, but it was just getting larger and getting closer. And then, you know, we had a president who was saying, oh, it's just a bug. You know, it's like the flu. It's going to go away. And who knew what was right? Then, yeah. then it was, you know, realizing, oh, shit, you know, this is really... A big deal and um, although I don't think I've a, I'm a religious person exactly I, I did you know think like wow I've got to find some solace somewhere I did yoga I meditated I did whatever I could to calm myself down including making this book 
Now, did you, are these spreads or pages from a day-to-day -day thing? Were you working on this every single day or was it kind of like you sat down and you bounced between pages? Tell us about your process with this. Well, I did work on it every day and um, I did try and do at least a spread a day. I often did more and I often went back. So, yes. Okay. So it was kind of all, all those things. <laughs> and in this one on the right, you could see that I was using some old prints, some discarded prints. They were part of this sheaf of papers I had in this book. Yeah. So um, that was, you know, that was useful and often gave me things to riff on. And then- now, on And what size is this when you have um, it? I think it's five by seven. Oh, we'll look okay. at it. It's, it's small. It's like, it's a format that I use for travel journals a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the weather started, we'd have a few nice days and I think, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it's not going to be, maybe I'm not going to die, you know? And, yeah. and, you know, started feeling like, okay, I'm going to go outside and um, see what I can make. So um, I went back to the studio and Alice and I came up with a pretty informal way to kind of come in and, you know, not intersect really, because we were really trying, both of us, to be careful. And yeah. um, so we, we would come and go. And in the beginning, I would enter with like my gloved hands and wipe everything down and, and sterilize anything that we might have both touched but we've gotten a little more relaxed, although we still try and respect each other's time and um, work independently. Yeah. Um, so I, I like the idea of doing these daily journeys. I really did. And I felt like now that I was in the studio, I had access to, to my prints, you know, my old prints. I had a lot more access to things like matte medium and, and paint and, more things to make these a little more artistic and mm -hmm. like individually as works of art. Yeah. And I would put them up in my studio window as I finished them. And people in the neighborhood were really positive. They'd wave at me, they'd point to the ones they liked. Mm -hmm. I think it was really, I started interacting with the community through my window. So yeah. though I was still kind of in quarantine, I felt like I was starting to reach out. And um, I liked working on the pages out of the book, though I always intended them to be part of a book. And so um, I really actually only recently bound them. And I'm gonna read some of this because I think it describes what I was thinking. So when I returned to my studio in mid-April 2020, a month after the initial shock of living in quarantine during a pandemic, I found myself unable to resume the series of colorful abstract monoprints I'd been working on. I started collaging instead, using whatever materials I could find, including my own discarded prints. Completing one collage a day for 24 days, I attempted to make sense of the topsy-turvy world around me to express mm -hmm. my daily wonder, worry, sadness, and horror. The pieces mm -hmm. became a series of their own, and that series became this book the accordion binding conveying how the early days of the virus stretched out, each one blending into the next. As I write this, the pandemic surges on, ebbing and flowing but not ending. Masks, hand sanitizer, and social distancing have become second nature. Even with all of the anxiety, fear, and danger, I remind myself that there's still love, hope, and beauty, and the pandemic will one day remembered only in books. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So um, these are the pages and we'll go through some of the pages. And after this talk, I will show you the book in a way so you can see how big it is and also how, you know, just the extent of it. But yeah. the titles kind of tell a lot, I think. And I time stamped each one. I used like a postal stamp in the right hand corner. You can see um, and they kind of go through, you know, in some ways it's like this, I don't want to say this is death. I, I think I'd let death know, let, 
the idea of death go a bit. But, you know, it's like the stages of, you know, fear, acceptance, yeah, all those kinds yeah. of things. And I feel like I went through that. Okay, we and have a couple of things in the chat. Beth says, beautiful. <laughs> and Marge says, will this be available to view after this original presentation? So let me just quickly answer that. Yes, Marge, we edit this. Um, it usually takes a few weeks and then we put it up on our Artist Bookhouse website and on our um, YouTube page. So let me drop that into the chat for you. You can keep your eyes peeled, but I know that that we will share it and Beth will also share it when it is when the recording is ready. So I'm sorry to interrupt the presentation to just drop that in. Um, and so go ahead. So this is the we're looking at the actual book yes. right now. Okay. Yes. And and there's you know it's it's two sided and um, there's 24 panels plus the cover and it stretches out for about 12 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to go through a couple of the pages close up just to give you a sense of what I did here. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. these aren't necessarily consecutive. They're just a selection. Um, and I sort of randomly placed them next to each other, but they kind of work. And you can see how I use some materials and imagery to connect the different pieces. But again, mm -hmm. so this was, I have, like many printmakers, I have a huge drawer of discarded prints and pieces of discarded prints. So right. the, the assignment I set up for myself was to find two prints that work together, either from mm -hmm. a color point of view or had some common elements. And that was the first thing I did. And then um, I did have, usually I had something in my mind, like when I did dreaming, I realized that I was having these wild dreams, you know? every night yeah. yeah i look for images that could describe that um you know again i got a little religious um but you know not it's non-sectarian i know this is this sort of encompass some old testament new testament but it's really just general like this feeling of wanting to connect yeah more and of a spiritual base than a than a religious base i think so i think so and then of course, you know, I was always concerned with having enough food. And then yeah. my son and his wife came to live with us. And oh, wow. so then actually staying stocked was, was really important because they were hungry. Yeah. And, and so um, I just want to think not conceptually, but, but physically with these. So you said you take a couple pr discarded prints and put them together and then how how are you layering on top are you printing on top are you just collaging on top are you drawing on top are you what's no. the layering that's happening i was not printing i was really just sitting at my big table um i collaged and i drew and okay. i painted. and i painted um yeah 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 and, and they reflect, you know, the things that we're concerned with. I think most people were concerned with food and how much time is this going to take and right, right. watch the news and it came from where, you know, there was seemed right. like there was always a new, where did it come from, you know? And, yeah. and, and then I'd have days that I just really felt like this is oppressive and I, I yeah. can't stand it. And so, um, then, you know, the, the reality that, you know, that one drop could come through the air and, you know, we had to keep masked. And I found this Magritte uh, painting particularly compelling considering what was going on. Um, not again, this was really for me about AIDS because I lived through the AIDS epidemic and lost friends and mm -hmm. um, it felt like that was the closest thing that I could, in my experience, that it happened. Yeah. Um, and so that spoke to that. And then we found out that um, my son's wife was having a baby. And mm -hmm. so that became important to think about making a safe place for them because they yeah. were living with us at the time. Yeah. 
So walking from my studio, from my home to my studio, I passed um, a playground and it was empty. Yeah. And, and that felt com very, and the only thing that were there were birds. There were birds, which you never see in a playground because there's always too much activity. Yeah. And yet, there they were. And it just, it made me sad that the kids couldn't go out and play. Yeah. Now, I still have a sense of humor, even though I, you know, have certainly some darkness. And <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the picture on the left sort of speaks to a little bit more playfulness and humor. And, you know, I felt like we'd take walks at night and we'd see people in the windows. And, and this was kind of my idea about that. Yeah. Um, the other place that we walked a lot was through a cemetery. I live close to the Cal Calvary Cemetery in Evanston. And yeah. um, there's lots of monuments and, um, you know, it was a nice, peaceful place to go walking, but, you know, that too resonated. Yeah. Yeah. So, so after 24 days, I actually made a few more, but I started to feel like they were forced. So okay. I, I stopped and I thought, well, you know, enough about me. Let's... <laughs> Right. You know, I, I was tired of wallowing, honestly. And I felt like by June, the weather's getting nice. And I really just wanted to figure out a way to engage with the community a little more. And I was, you know, kind of inspired by posting all those um, diary pages in the window. And I started doing this project that I called the COVID House Project. And I, um, just made these mono prints off of some handmade on handmade paper that I had saved up. I made about 25 of them and they really, they sold right out of my window. People were coming by and just emailing me or pointing in the window. And, um, I was donating, um, a third of what I got paid to the Evanston community foundation, which had a, COVID relief fund. And I felt like that was something I could do. I was, yeah, sorry. No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quickly interrupt you. There's an, a question about the book piece and I don't know that Beth had heard this earlier. Um, so her question in the chat is, do you have a background in making books? So I'm, I think she came in a little later after we talked about your, your, your book, book experience and she says i see your book is a concertina which is i mentioned it's an accordion book and then where did you learn binding was were the um, three so sure. if you want to mention that now or if you want to wait we can hold off on those questions and go through the rest of your presentation if you want yeah i think, think so i think that um why don't we go through the rest of the presentation and then when we get to the book i'll talk a little bit about how i did it but suffice yeah. to say i'm a trained graphic designer and i have taken some classes in bookmaking um at oxbow uh with janine coop writing and i am a little bit self-taught i mean being a graphic designer i have a lot of those kinds of skills you know mm -hmm. like measuring and burnishing and gluing. Yeah. And so um, this, I really had to figure out the, um, the accordion book. And I'll yeah. talk a little bit about that when we look at it. Yeah. So I'm gonna read um, a little part of this because it tells a story of the COVID house prints. These monoprints were made during the time of sheltering in place when home has been a sanctuary as well as a place of confinement. Each print is unique. They're done with water-based ink on handmade paper and reflect my experience of the world in and around home during this time. All of the images incorporate a generic house shape with layers of plant forms, building materials, and crows. The mood is dark, but the compositions are hope a hopeful reminder of the world around us that is still growing, changing, and waiting. A third of the cost was donated to the Emerson Community Foundation. So, um, I'll go and show you some of these. I also, um, I'm not gonna read this whole part about the crows, but I do wanna talk, I wanna uh, just read part of it. Crows seem to be a perfect symbol of the time of COVID. From their similar genus name, Corvus, to their tendency to remain solitary, but to cleave together as a community for common cause, 
They're a symbol of life and death. Many of the prints from my COVID house project have a lino print of a crow in them. They have become a mascot to me for this project. Okay, there's a couple mentions in the chat here. Joy, Joy Anissa, I think I said that right. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, says, thank you so much for your donation to the Evanston Community Foundation's Rapid Response Fund. You are appreciated, Beth. And then Nancy, who used to work at Evanston Public Library, so she's got that base for many, many years. She was a library person. Crows equals corvidae, which is what you just mentioned in your, from, yeah. the, from the root of the language. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then these are big. These are bigger than the COVID uh, oh. diary. Oh yeah, and these are 19 by 24, um, and I'm seeing all these typos, so please excuse the fact. That, My okay. husband's probably going to. And type this was, later. this was on handmade paper. Is this paper that you made and had in stock, or is this paper you purchased? It's per paper I purchased. Um, okay. I found this kind of paper I really like at Artists and Craftsmen downtown, which is closed. But I found that Blick also carries it. It's it's a very rough paper. It's called Shazen paper, and I think they mm -hmm. actually call it pastel paper. Okay. It's handmade, it's unsized. It won't go, you, you really can't soak it. Um, but I found ways to use it, and I really like the, the decal and the kind of rough quality of it, particularly mm -hmm. for this project. Yeah, the so, texture really adds to it, for sure. So I used things, um, some old blocks, I cut a few, I cut this lino of the crow and of this sort of uh, circular shape and, and used it. But I pulled in anything I could find. I mean, I used, a, uh, I, I also really like the papyrus leaf and I, pre I grow them and press them and, and they somehow had this sort of ominous natural feeling to them and and conveyed something of both the beauty and the scariness of the time mm. um, I had many variations of this print many like 25 and they're all different and um, I, I somehow this crow really like had a personality to me and yeah. um, you know looking at a beach house or caught between houses and all of these are no longer in my possession and yeah. best I had were iPhone pictures because they came and went so quick. But Which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I've never I've never had that happen and it was very satisfying. Not only because I was able to donate the money, I was also able to make some money, but just to know that I think I had people tell me that they wanted something to remember this time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it served, it, it spoke to my neighbors. And I, I did sell one that actually went to the UK through Instagram. Uh -huh. But all I did was post them on Instagram and my window. Yeah, yeah. So the natural outcome of, uh, I thought, of this COVID house project was to actually make a COVID house. And yeah. it was sort of spurred on by a prompt in my collaboration group that my studio mate, Alice, um, organizes. And I think the prompt was to make a box. And in this is my box. And it's a book too, in a way, because I've lined it with, um, this is the New York Times cover that was the infamous New York Times cover that listed the, the dead at a hundred thousand yeah. and in a way this became a tomb you know it, it's yeah. for a memorial i really yeah. thought of it as a memorial and you can see in the detail that it is the names of the hundred thousand dead and i also read it i mean i don't know if any of you had a chance to read it but it was moving because yeah. they the name and then they'd say he loved peanuts or, you know, it was really yeah. something. It was really moving and very, very, it, like you said, it's a kind of a memento mori of the time. And it's what's sad to me right now is that we're almost to 200,000. Yes, people. yes, very much, very much so. So, yeah. so um, I really like making these houses and I made another one and Actually, this one's a little bit bigger, it looks like. 
No, it's not. The, this is a typo. It's not 19. Oh, like, so you're yeah, taking okay. the bigger sheets and then folding them into the house. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, I was wrong. I went through this so many times and I, I missed a couple things. It's about missed 12 typos. Long. Yeah. And yeah. this too was lined with a COVID report from the New York Times. And oh. I put the crow on this one because the crow was going on everything at that point. So when you're making these, are you, you've got your large sheet of paper. I'm going to get technical at this point. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you laminate or like glue the, the New York Times report to the back of the Hemi paper and then you fold, you cut it out and fold it up into the house in glue? And also Katie is saying sad that we need a bigger house now. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Katie. Um, so is that the process here? So you're pretty much it that way I and made with tabs and everything pattern. yeah I made a pattern I figured out how to do it with tabs and glue and you know I lined the other side with the you know in a way I had to map it out so I could know which panel was where right. and I yeah I glued the I mean now I have a, a time magazine that looks kind of cool yeah, that I'm, I want to make more of these. Actually, I feel like I need they need company, and at some point, if I have a show, I'd like to almost have a neighborhood. Yeah, um, I was just thinking a neighborhood of COVID houses. And and they, yeah. you know, it's a great thing, you know, for a printmaker. We're we're so used to working flat on these flat things to to mm -hmm. see it. That's one of the reasons I like making books and I've made cases for my books. And this is where being a graphic designer really comes in handy because I, I can think like this, like an opened yeah. up shape and a closed up shape. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I did. I, I worked on both sides. I, I drew the, the pattern on the big sheet of paper and then I reinforced the paper with board on the different panels. And okay. then I it over and then I folded it up nice okay um and that's that's it this one is i've made some bigger ones which you'll see um also when when we walk through the studio but this just gives you a sense of you know like i i listen sometimes to wbz while i'm working and mm -hmm. they started talking uh, npr the news report talked about how there was an asteroid about to hit earth and they didn't know where it was going to be and i thought oh my god you know now we can worry about like an asteroid and it went into so um you know it's it's really been like i said going from my home to my studio out into the community and finding ways to connect with my community do some good and make some art yeah. Now, are these this larger? I don't. I don't remember what's hanging in your window right now. I know Alice has some things hanging on her side of her window, but so what? What is hanging in your window right now? Well, we you guys have two two window sections, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we do. Um, we might take a look at that if we have some time. Um, yeah. I think right now I've taken the crow prints out of the window because I kind of feel like this project is done. Okay. Um, there may be a few more that I'll sell, but I also want to keep some because yeah. I feel like this is a body of work that I need to kind of keep a record of. Sure. Um, and what, what's in my window right now are some smaller prints. I've, and, and I'll show them to you when we okay. get to that. Okay. So are there any other questions? I don't have any questions right now. Is this your last slide? Are we it is almost so you can see the relative slides. You can see how I worked with the house and this sort of COVID -y lino cut and my crows. And you know, I've explored a lot of different ideas through these few elements. And um below here you'll see that I um I made some smaller prints because we've had these sidewalk sales and I wanted to make things that were very accessible to just about anybody. So I sold these for like $20 to the neighbors and they're on Joss paper. And yeah. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Joss paper, but Joss paper is used in Chinese, traditional Chinese funerals. And it is um, usually burned at, at a funeral. And it's, um, I think, they write 
uh, things that they want people to carry into the next world. So they seem to have a, it was right, you know, it, it was the right combination of materials. And um, I've also put them on maps, which was an inspiration from Marty Sears um, and her map work. I thought, oh, crows on maps, that works. So right now what's in my window, which I'll show you um, when this presentation is kind of coming to an end, I've just put the um, smaller prints and people have been contacting me to just, they, they want um, a print of a crow on Washington DC or something like that. Oh, it's, I hey, love that. Yeah, and, and actually the one up that is sort of Kabbalistic and I yeah. think that's refer to that um that one before i put a crow on everything i did some without crows and that was one of them that i thought was particularly successful um so now we're going to look at the houses just because the houses really came out of the prints and now you can see some of the things that um were on the powerpoint and the size of them is you can see by my hand how big they are yeah. That I really do hope to make a whole neighborhood. My color palette was much more limited than anything I had been working on. I really, you know, didn't get into as many colors as I usually work with. So that was, and I really, you know, black was in everything. Is there All a right. reason for that? Did you make that choice as you were yeah. printing or was it kind of like, that's just how it happened? No, I made that choice. I mean, for one thing, in printing the linos, you know, black was nice and graphic. But, yeah. you know, I really did want to limit my palette. I mean, I yes. brought blue and orange and black were pretty strong themes throughout. And I think gives it continuity. Um, Emma can, is showing you my studio, by the way. Um, it is, this is my- Maybe press. slow down a little bit, Emma, so that we're not getting dizzy. There's your press. <laughs> and it's a beautiful, spacious, bright studio and um, Alice's areas over to the right. And um, it's very nice, very comfortable. And um, it's really a happy place to work. And I feel very fortunate that I had this place to come to in the last several months. And I look forward to spending more time here and, and, and making more work. So now we're gonna go over, um, here I keep, I'm gonna take my computer that has. Yeah, that's your microphone. <laughs> so I'm gonna start over here with um, my quarantine journal. And this is, um, we have looked at some of these pages and you can see that it's, this one is very improvisational and informal and has all different sizes of pages and kinds of pages in it. I drew in it, I wrote in it. I just really sort of vomited. I love that. these, like, I love these sort of way, the way that you can see when you have a shorter page where you can see the page behind it, it kind of changes the image there. Yeah, I love that. That's really wonderful. I didn't want to show you this binding. I know Liz had asked me about this. So basically I learned this, it's just like an elastic and you can put sheets of pages and you can pull them out and put them in. And, I find and you can rearrange this as you go. So it's, it's very loose binding here. I, I, felt, I, I started doing these as travel journals. This is one from my trip to Israel. And it's just a nice thing to be able to pull them in and take them out. And then I also did another one here. Again, same thing, you know, the elastic. It's kind of a no fuss binding, but it is. Now, is this, is this elastic like a hairband? How are you, what is the elastic itself? It's just elastic, I don't know. <laughs> like, did you get that at Joann's or, or at the? Uh... Yeah, I got it from okay. actually, but yeah, it's just simple elastic. And you know, I, I just covered book board and used some binding tape to reinforce it. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is, has beautiful paper that, that was made by Andrew Peterson, who was 
someone I studied with also at Oxbow. Yes. And this is a journal I worked on last summer when I was staying at a friend's house. Um, and this explores the idea of biomorphing. Um, okay. So I have another book that I'll show, but I want to get to make sure to get to the um, COVID diary. So Okay, so this is your COVID diary. This is it. And um, I'm going to do my best to spread it out. And Emma's going to do her best to film me doing this. Um, as I said, it's, it's quite large and it's even heavy. Um, I, I do want to, I'm going to show you something that it was based on. It was based on a Japanese scrapbook, uh -huh. um, that I had, and I just figured out how to do it using bookboard, binding tape. I made the book itself and then I glued the collages into the book. Um, using PBA, which was actually your suggestion, Janie. Yes, it was. I remember we were talking about this the day that I came by to look at your window. Right. Um, and Ben helped you with this as well, right? Sorry, say that again, please. Ben Blunt helped you with this as well, your next door neighbor and our dear friend, Ben. He um, helped me letter press the cover. So no. I, I was kind of trying to figure out how to get something that looked handmade but also had the clarity of machine made and letterpress was the answer. Letterpress is almost always the answer to everything. Yeah, it definitely, I thought, wow, I think maybe I need to do this some more. But you know, yeah. I was kind of shying away from it because I didn't want to end up just being a graphic designer. Sure. So that's always my struggle in a way because I know so many tricks, but um, I do want to, uh, so any questions? Emma's doing a really nice slow pan of the pages. Yeah, I love this. So um, I just have a question as far, you said this was how many feet wide does it stretch? 12 feet wide or 20 uh, feet? Right now it's probably stretched about 10 feet, but you can see it's not fully open. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have, a, I have two six foot tables and it's almost, it goes pretty much the length of them. The entire way. And it's not nice and sturdy, you know. It, I wanted it to be kind of almost sculptural. Yeah. So these pages are like, the bookboard's very sturdy. Yeah, bookboard is fantastic. So do you want to show us that that in your hands? That's your, that's your inspiration for the structure of this accordion? No, yeah, I think so. I'm going to stand behind this table. You can stand in front of it. Um, basically, this is a book I inherited. My father gave it to me. He collected the Japanese and Chinese antiques. And it is, it is an accordion book of similar yeah. size. And it's kind of a collection of Japanese prints. It's one family's sort of album of their prints. And it was, I, I was looking at it and I thought, well, this, this really does get across the idea of one thing sort of bleeding and blending into another. And right. um, so I kind of had this as my model. And um, I want to show you just one other thing quickly that's not related to this, but very related to being a book artist. And yeah. it was, it's something I did um, years ago when I had a show called What I Learned About Flower Arranging. It's a modified book, and it was, again, used as the basis for a show. And I rebound, it's a book on Japanese flower arranging, and I rebound it, um, and I basically changed it, and I isolated some of the, um, some yeah. of the yeah. instructions on how to make these different arrangements. I painted into them on gouache and, and just really kind of ripped on the whole thing. Yeah. And I think this really kind of re-engaged me in the idea of making artist books, things that yeah. were one of a kind, things that were 
fun. I mean, the nice thing about making artist books is that it's portable. In other words, this is your studio. You know, yeah. you don't need anything else. You need like a box of paints and uh, maybe some pens and your studio can go wherever you're going. Yes. And, and especially when you're traveling or if I'm in, if I can't get to my studio, it's especially um, satisfying. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. Hi again. Thank you so much for watching this week's foreign tour. We really appreciate your support. If you want to learn more about our guests from today, please read the description below. And if you'd like to support more programming like this, coming from Artist Bookhouse, please visit our website at artistbookhouse.org slash donate. Thank you again for joining us. <laughs>